really interesting about hotels and um, one of the elements that I think is, is really captured us is that that when you walk into a hotel you receive a sort of performance you receive it from the front desk um, you receive it from the cleaners that do your room from the waiters from all the staff and in a way that very easily transfers to this performance for us um, which I think that we're going to enjoy doing with satire and with comic in this work um, but Another thing about the hotels, apart from the way the hotel itself functions that's really interesting, is also that it's a, um, it's a space where people can go and not be in their own lives for a night, um, whether that's for business or for pleasure, or it's because it's a place you shouldn't, you're not supposed to be. Um, that you can go, you walk away from your life, and you live in that space as, as whoever you want for, say, 24 hours, 48 hours. And so it can also be a place where people make transformations in their lives, um, and it can be a place, I suppose, where hearts can be broken and, and hearts can be made. And um, that's another reason for us why, as a, as a company who likes to explore human relationships, why this is such an interesting space for us. Mm -hmm. as a, um, It enables us to play with the comedy and the small moments in just, what is a hotel? It's, you know, we get a free shampoo, we get, we get um, a turn down from the service and we get to play with all those elements but also there's something much more profound happening here and that's about who am I when I walk into this hotel and after I've had this hour of a hotel experience who am I when I leave and I think that's become an interesting artistic question for us to take forward into creation. What's really lovely about the way we're approaching um, the hotel experience is that we would like to make this a show that can be reached by many people and um, often uh, we realise there can be a bit of a boundary um, around the theatre. Perhaps it's because people can't get to local theatres because they're in rural communities or maybe they're just people who don't feel like the theatre is the place for them. So um, we're trying to make a work in many ways that tries to bridge some of those problems um, and create um, an, an opportunity for people to come to a work that uh, talks about everyday relationships that with um, narratives that feel um, understood, quite easily understood, even though they're complex, uh, but they've got an entry into them. Um, 
and also that uh, in the end creates a dance experience that uh, you can go away from and say wow that was really um, really exciting to go to I, I do get it to some degree or um, I just really enjoyed it so in many ways this this piece is about um, us feeling artistically that we have been able to create a work that we feel incredibly proud of but also that doesn't um, alienate anyone from the experience of coming to enjoy their own hotel experience. Uh, it's one, two, one. So I don't know if you guys like to discover this little cheat that this right hand doesn't stop moving. Yeah, it's quite useful, isn't it? That and then you take right. And I think from this like soft place, we can the set can really come alive and for me as a composer I've been looking at ways that the sound can come not just from speakers around the audience but also from the actual action inside and how um, simple appliances like the mini fridge that you associate with a hotel can be transformed with both light and sound into something that's a bit magical um, and I've been working with Simon Plumridge on how the set can be uh, transformative, how simple things can become other things that are a bit more magical and so that might include how um, domestic lighting transforms, uh, how a mini fridge might become sound and light insulation for that scene. So um, I might take the hum of some kind of appliance and use that as a backdrop of the soundtrack for that particular scene. Uh, and we've been looking at also at what kind of sounds exist outside of the hotel or what kind of world exists outside of the hotel and how that creeps in. And, um, and this is something that Nick Walker, our writer, has been really helping us with. Thinking about is, is the hotel near, um, for example, a, an airport? And then that gives me the opportunity to play with helicopters going over, um, planes flying around. And just thinking about how we really kind of embed that hotel in the world that's all around us, so the audience feel like that's a really relatable narrative to them. Yeah, reception was really bad. Sorry, I didn't get on to you earlier. Hello, are you back? Yeah. Okay, no problem. The hotel experience is an immersive show, and so I've been thinking about how the sound can be choreography as well and how um, rather than it just coming from two speakers in front of the audience that it comes all around and that there are times when the, the audience feels the sound move through the space and that that's um, something that we can choreograph and work with to really bring the piece to life. Yeah, just hold on a second, just while I... Uh... Yeah. Hi. <laughs> that uh, I've just been really interested in the idea of sort of voiceover that might kind of drift underneath it and um, uh, and uh, so this you know you two in the room piece for example it might be that just what might go underneath that is is something like the experience of uh, what the receptionist might say so it feels like that that could be a piece which is about the early exploration of the room you know when you first go in and you're kind of checking it out for the very first time. So there's a little bit of a kind of, um, your room's number 365, it's on the third floor, you, you've got a key card, and when you go in, you'll be able to adjust the temperature. You can't open the windows, but there's a mini bar, which is operator. There'll be a thingy on your desk, you know, room service card or thing. If you need anything, just call down zero. My name is Carter, whatever, I'm receptionist, or whatever, you know. And, and so it's just the blurb that you kind of hear. So you sort of, get the sense of the, the hotel bit of it, but also the, the experience of the people in the room, and then a little, ask to sort of dwell a little bit on that moment of the view that you kind of get when you first sort of look out and you can see the city or wherever it is for the first time. So uh, it'd be interesting to explore what that kind of narrative does. 
Um, similarly, with the bed, I'm kind of interested in the idea of people wanting to change rooms. So I think hotels are the only place where you actually speak on, the, on a phone, on a regular phone, you know, where you call down and sort of say, um, uh, the, I don't like the pillows, I'm allergic to feathers, can we have new pillows, can we have a do, uh, actually there's a couple next door and they're rowing, it's really noisy in here, is there a better room that we could go to, or can we have some more shampoo please, because it's really hard. Um, so one of our challenges moving this piece forward, and um, also one of the things that motivates us the most actually, is how this immersive show goes from space to space, and... Um, and that we have designed it or are going to design it so that it can go to any theatrical space that also it's possible that it goes to non-theatrical spaces um, but the rub is that it looks just as beautiful as it would do in a theatre so that comes down to um, the inception of the design and it was why our R&D was so important so that right from the outset we began to think immediately how does sound, movement, light, design, movement, voice uh, set all come together in a kind of choreographic alchemy that um, that can be relived or relit or reheard in any space um, with as much quality as you would hear it in a theatre. Uh, so uh, we spend a lot of time working with participants um, of all different ages throughout our projects, and um, over the last couple of years, we've developed a process by which. We work with um, people, different ages and experiences and bring them into the professional work to perform uh, a section of the piece. So in the hotel experience we are going to continue this practice um, and in the research so far we've worked with quite a few people um, to engage them in the kind of very beginnings of the idea. Um, just in the last uh, practical research that we were doing, we had um, 15 uh, people from the University of Chichester working with us uh, alongside our collaborators. And that was a really kind of rich place to see just what is possible when you get uh, people from all different walks of life working with you on an idea. Um, that also sets us a challenge to think about how we've made all these great big ideas with these big casts and um, now suddenly we've got to work out how do we reduce those narrative ideas and um, really powerful and energetic sections into what might just be four people. Um, for the hotel experience we're going to uh, try to progress our idea of our extended cast um, by having one section open to a mixed um, age and experience of people as uh, similar to what we did in our last production um, and in that we are going to try to create something really really energetic and joyful um, ideally a party of some description we're not quite sure how that's going to work Um, but there's also another strand of this that we're going to try and explore, um, mainly with musicians actually, to see whether we can make some openings in this work for one or two mus musicians to have a kind of bespoke role. They might be um, a pianist in our bar section or they might be a singer um, at the wedding party. We're not quite sure how, but we would like to try and carve these roles in the work so that um, Again, we're sort of trying to push the boundaries between professional and participation and see, is it possible for us to enable someone to take the next step? So, um, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, really looking forward to, to trying it out in the process.